Hi, I'm Joanna Penn from thecreativepen.com and this is a little video about my reading habits and I just watched a video by Hugh Howie about his reading habits and I thought it was a great idea and I would love to hear about yours too. But for this video I'm just going to tell you about how I read and how I find books and also how I then go on and review books uh, and hopefully it'll be interesting uh, for you. So. Uh, first up, I read primarily in bed uh, on my Kindle Paperwhite, which I absolutely love. Uh, I have probably right now about 200 books that I'm that well, I've either downloaded to read or I'm in the middle of reading. I, I normally have about five going at the same time, mix of fiction, non-fiction. Yeah, basically. So Kindle Paperwhite is my sort of primary reading device um, in bed, on the sofa, uh, when I go away on holiday, it's my default reading device. But then when I leave the house, <laughs> uh, to I live in central London and go on the tube, I read on the phone and I read on the Kindle app on the iPhone. Now, I was one of those people who said, oh, I could never read on the phone. But to be honest, what you have to remember about uh, a book whether it's a story or it's you know whatever it is once you your brain is in the book you actually lose you lose the container as such. It doesn't matter whether it's this uh, container or this container or a print container, uh, it's the words that matter and the words that go into your head. So basically I'm on the tube and sometimes I'm you know kind of like this on the tube but what's so cool about the phone is you can turn the pages with a thumb and uh, it's brilliant. You can also highlight with a thumb which I love. Um, I'm highlighting addicted to non-fiction and I read an awful lot so um, I can basically uh, scroll like this, uh, highlight and awesome. And the auto sync is brilliant. So I can go to bed um, reading this and then get up in the morning and uh, open the Kindle app and it's on the page where I left off. So I love that. And yes, I know if you have a print book, you can turn the corner or whatever, but this can hold, I don't know, a thousand books or something. And um, what I actually like about the um, the, the phone uh, app, because I've got the, the paper white and it's black and white, which, you know, I don't mind. I don't want a fire because I don't want all the different stuff you can do on it. I like the paper white, uh, but it is black and white. So what I actually like on the um, on the on the phone app here is that you can see the stuff in color. So that's you know kind of awesome, and I, I really enjoy seeing the covers in color. So I do that, and then I do also have some print books. Now I do rarely read you know whole books in paper anymore um, and I never read fiction I'm just thinking no I, I basically haven't read a physical book uh, for fiction for, I don't know, two years or something now. Um, but I do have some non-fiction, so I have some examples for you here of things that I buy in non-fiction. So for example, textbooks, uh, Robert McKee's story being one of my, um, I don't know if you can see, but the how many pages are are you know sort of dog-eared this is a fantastic book for for writers so of course I have textbooks and uh, that one's a really you know I've had that for a long time and I always keep notes on it uh, another thing I have in print is poetry so uh, here's one of my favorite poets Ben Okri uh, who's Nigerian poet and uh, this is brilliant by the way if you like poetry um, so I because poetry is more about reading slowly and enjoying the language. I like to have some poetry in print, plus the books are really small. <laughs> so that's also, and then I have beautiful books. <laughs> Things I cannot resist. I sometimes, that there's some, a few bookshops in London, the Welcome Books, books uh, the Welcome um, Museums uh, bookstore, the Blackwells is amazing. I love that. Um, and also I go to the uh, Waterstones in Piccadilly and Foils, love them. So some of the books that I will um, buy in print include, here's a good example, Alchemy and Mysticism. It's it's full of, of pictures and, uh, you know, images and, and stuff. And so basically it's, it's one of these books where it's just better to have in print. And that's a chunky book. Um, but again, and, and this is, well, I love this. It's, it's more of a talisman. I think uh, uh, books like this are more of a talisman. Amusingly, I have a few more to show you, which are actually on the floor, they're so big. So this is Carl Jung's Red Book. 
check that out it's massive i don't even know i think it i'm not sure how much it weighs it weighs like a small child <laughs> and it's it's huge and it's full of carl Jung's handwriting Ooh, if you can see that and his um his paintings so carl Jung, the psychologist had a, a breakdown <laughs> And during his breakdown, he did a private uh, diary, which was called the Red Book and uh, the Liber Novus. And essentially it was only released by his family about four years ago now. And this is one of these kind of, for someone like me who specialised in psychology and religion, this is again a kind of talisman book. Um, and then just to show you a couple more tells you a bit about the type of person I am, the empire of death. Um, again, this is one of these, um, you know, gift books with amazing pictures. I think most of the books that I would own in, in print are, are important for their images, um, for example. And this guy, um, Paul Kudinaris, uh, is a sort of special, specialised in ossuaries and things, which I write about in, in a lot of my fiction under J.F. Penn, if you're interested. Um, and then finally, this would be called a, um, I guess, an antique book. Um, this is called Palestine, and uh, whatever your politics, <laughs> it is from when that area of the world was, you know, called Palestine, and it's full of original uh paintings by the author and it's been rebound um but it's it's an old book as you can see so this is more like a treasured possession i would say so uh, and then the the only other example of uh, and then the only other example of things that i own in print are travel books so for example we cycled through india last year and uh, uh you know when you're cycling you, you it's easier to have a print book in case you have a big crash as i did um so those are the things that i own in print and the reason i say that i guess is because i know some people who have an issue with ebooks think that uh we are not true book lovers but i'm a true book lover so much so uh that i probably i now own over a thousand books, a thousand and thirty-seven, I think, books on Kindle. Um, but I used to have over two and a half thousand print books um, when I lived in Australia, and many of those I had shipped from Britain to New Zealand to Australia at great cost, as you can imagine. <laughs> uh, when we decided to move back from Australia to England, I kind of said, well, you know, maybe now is the time to move to digital. So I wanted to, you know, kind of explain why I'm Kindle because I, you know, I think Kobo's amazing. Uh, there's there's the brilliant Nook. There's iBooks. You know, there's other apps you can read on. So why am I Kindle? Um, the main reason is that uh, in Australia, where I was living in uh, 2007, it was uh, print books in Australia then and now are incredibly expensive. So a uh, brand new fiction novel, for example, would be around 25 to 35 Aussie dollars, which would be 15 pounds, which is about three times as much as a print book in Britain. And so at the time I was pretty much only spending uh, money on non-fiction because you know I always do spend more money on non-fiction you expect to pay more when you get a measurable benefit I think um, which again is why people will pay more for a non-fiction ebook now and as I do uh, so I pretty much stopped reading fiction in Australia there were a couple of authors who I would buy uh, but mostly I would um, and I did go to the library um, but mostly I was uh, doing other things um, with my time. Now when the Kindle launched internationally it was that the Sony Reader came first and I had a look at the Sony Reader but it didn't really grab me and then Amazon launched the Kindle in Australia and I bought one and I was absolutely hooked and my video uh, review of the international Kindle I think was one of the first in Australia to um, I was one of the first people to get one and I was an instant convert so when I talk about my e-reading kind of habit it is is due to the fact that I was a 
keen mad reader I've been reading since I was a child I used to drag around books not a teddy bear you know that's how how much I was addicted and still am um, so essentially I uh, I became an addicted Kindle reader and my reading exploded I I probably read about five times as many books as I used to and uh, I you know I buy several books a week <laughs> So I am one of those uh, super readers that publishers love and uh, authors love too, of course. And uh, again, just off, on a tangent, I, I've, it really annoys me when people talk about, um, you know, this... Uh, that there are too many people too many people are writing and publishing books because aren't does that make everybody a writer not a reader which is crazy because I'm a writer um you know uh, actually some of the other print books I have in my house are my own books <laughs> so I have you know some of mine here but I there is no way I could ever write books as fast as I read them so for every book I write I probably read several hundred <laughs> books <laughs> so it's a crazy thing most writers are readers uh, anyway getting back to the point so that's that's why I'm uh, I'm a Kindle reader although um, just personally I don't believe in DRM digital rights management I turn all that off when I publish things um, uh, but I I'm pretty much uh, locked in I guess to that platform because it continues to please me as a reader um, now I do uh, you know I have uh, played around on Kobo I've played around on Nook and I do have some books on iBooks um, on the iBooks app on the iPhone because I do read on the iPhone um, but I'm primarily Kindle okay so yeah we when we moved from Australia to London I uh, we got rid of all our print but now I do find myself buying books that I used to own in print again in digital. And one of the reasons I believe in digital as a demographic shift is because the demographic, um, you know, people are moving into cities. And when you move into cities, as we moved from a more spacious city into a, a inner city, London, you have a smaller space to live in and you can't have as much stuff. And I believe, you know, if you look at the, um, the way the world is moving across the whole world, um, you know, China, for example, people are moving from the outskirts and the countryside into the cities for jobs. And and, and people will move to digital because then you know your life becomes very simple in terms of stuff so that's that's pretty good okay so how do I actually find books to read now uh, that's not hard <laughs> I have a lot of books to read I don't think readers have any problem finding books um, authors may have trouble getting their books in front of readers but as a reader there is never a shortage of anything to read so in terms of uh, fiction uh, if I know and love the author I will generally and I find out they have a new book I will pre-order the book it doesn't usually matter how much it costs but it has to be on Kindle um, so I will pre-order the Kindle um, as long as it's kind of under if it's under 10 pounds to me I will just pre-order it no worries um, I, in terms of fiction impulse buys, if it's under two pounds, uh, I will generally uh, impulse buy absolutely. And uh, Amazon recently had 99p 12 days of Kindle Christmas or something, and I probably bought about 30 books <laughs> because they were there were some great books and you know completely stocked up. So um, that's a kind of impulse buy level. And for authors, that's why we 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 do have a lower priced. Uh, book usually or a free book because um, you know that enables people to find them although I say that and it reminds me that I personally don't usually get free books um, I don't usually even take advantage of my Am Amazon Prime borrows uh, or my um, yeah or if there are things that are free I, I maybe it's because I'm an author but I always like to pay for something so um, I think most serious readers are happy to pay for things I don't think that's a problem uh, I also buy books just in case so similar to when you have print books at home uh, with ebooks I am the same so I see a book cover I like or I read a blurb that I think all oh, that's good click to buy that doesn't mean I'm gonna read it <laughs> 
<laughs> As all readers listening will understand, we do not necessarily read everything in our libraries. Just owning things is sometimes good enough. And what I sometimes do with the um, uh, the Kindle app on the Mac is um, because I do a lot of underlining and, and searching and notes and stuff, I'll search for a topic and uh, on my Kindle app and find books that perhaps I've bought on a whim uh, but haven't actually read and don't remember but they're there anyway. So now because I have such a, a big library I tend to do that if I'm researching something. Um, so ossuaries are a good example. Uh, so you know search that, see what I've already got on that and uh, that's quite quite good. Uh, for fiction I also, uh, one of my kind of uh, guilty pleasures I suppose or not so guilty is I'll search the um, the thriller list and the um, you know last 30 what's come out in the last 30 days bestseller list in the last 30 days um, and actually just have a look at what's what's out there I will um, I will also pick up curated lists so if there are you know top books with demons in then I'll go and have a look at that and and um, potentially get some samples of that uh, I do definitely click on covers I like um, for example just before Christmas I um, I saw the cover for a Jonathan Mabry book I'd never heard of Jonathan Mabry which is crazy because now I realize he's quite a big author um, I bought this one book and and have been on a binge read so uh, you know I think I've read about seven of his books in the last couple of weeks uh, as I've you know I just discovered him and now I'm reading loads of his backlist so that normally happens with fiction for me I'll, I'll find someone I like and I want to read loads of them I did try Kindle Unlimited as a reader and I didn't really like it. What annoyed me was there were so many books that weren't in Kindle Unlimited that I wanted to read that I found I was, you know, spending money anyway. So I'm I came out of that. Um, in terms of non-fiction, I get a lot of non-fiction books and I read business books and entrepreneurial books, travel books, some memoir, um, psychology, supernatural, travel, uh, that type of thing. I get most of my books from podcasts and I listen to quite a lot of podcasts and blog posts and a site called Brain Pickings, which is fantastic. A lot of book recommendations there. Um, and I expect to pay more for non-fiction, um, so I uh, I'd probably pay up to sort of £12 for non-fiction, possibly £15 if I really, really want the book, but that is generally the same price as a print book. Um, but um, I also get things off social media, so uh, sometimes someone will tweet me, I'll click on their profile, I'll like the look of the author or what they're talking about and may buy their book or authors who recommend books on Twitter, particularly Twitter, I will often check those out as well. When I find books I like, um, I will sample them. So what are, what that means if you don't read ebooks is I uh, click to get a sample and a percentage is downloaded to my device, either my phone or my paperwhite. That arrives on my uh, Kindle, I start reading and I'm pretty hardcore, I normally give the book three or four, sometimes five clicks, you know, which are page turns, maybe a bit more on the phone because that would be a bit rude, um, but essentially I see how far I can get in the sample. If, I, if I'm bored by five clicks or not hooked, uh, I will usually delete the sample because life is too short. <laughs> basically. Uh, there, as I said, there are no shortage of books to read, so generally if I'm not into it I will just delete the sample, uh, and I have a couple of hundred samples on my Kindle at any time, so I have plenty to choose from. Um, if I make it to the end of the sample, then I am very likely to click the one more click to actually buy the book and uh, then continue reading. So sampling so important. Uh, which leads me on to what really annoys me as a reader. <laughs> so um, 
my probably my number one thing is books that are not available on Kindle. I will point out the entire James Michener backlist. <laughs> so um, The Source by James Michener, which is a book about Israel, amazing historical, you know, sweeping historical fiction, um, you know, a bit like Edward Rutherford, if you if you read some of his stuff. Um, and The Source is one of my favorite books. It is still not available on ebook. I mean, these are chunky books. And um, so Random House, get your act together. Together, that is a massive backlist that needs to get on ebook um, and I, I amusingly I, I did buy that again in fiction but I, uh, in, in print but I just, I just can't I really don't like reading in print anymore it's funny isn't it um, I don't like the smell of old books ah isn't that awful <laughs> I actually work in one of the oldest libraries in London um, the London library where um, you know Agatha Christie's worked and, and Charles Darwin and uh, you know loads of famous authors and I don't like reading the old books uh, oh I'm getting blasphemous now aren't I uh, so what else makes me angry um, US first releases okay or releases in one country in the world very annoying because in a world of online global marketing if you send out a tweet and say my book is available great go buy it and I click on it and it says not available in your country <laughs> I get so annoyed uh, yeah staggered releases a pain and you know I realize traditional publishing is complicated but this is one of the things I like about um, indie authors is generally it's available everywhere which is marvelous uh, print only launches I also get annoyed at I mean seriously you're missing out on a reader like me and if you I mean the least you should do is have a pre-order button if you're going to do print only have a pre-order button so that if I see the marketing for the print book and I want it uh, I can click the pre-order for Kindle even if it's six months later or whatever but I won't remember otherwise I'm very unlikely to remember um, Sample I also annoys me are samples that include acknowledgements, forwards, essays by someone else. All of that should go at the back. Um, if I click to have a sample and I have four four pages in my sample, do you really want me to have to page through acknowledgements? Because if you do, I'm going to delete it. Uh, it's, it amazes me how many traditionally published books, ebooks, have these things at the front um, crazy put all of that at the back please uh, and also ebooks that are just clearly scanned versions of print books uh, that is terribly annoying and uh, I never refund uh, an ebook I um, but I get annoyed and you won't get a review <laughs> don't do that and then talking about reviews uh, so what do I do when I finish a book so uh, I use Goodreads as my um, sort of main review platform uh, I used to review on Amazon but because I am an author um, there you know um, after the sock puppet uh, scandal uh, if there's any implication that you might know the author or anything um, your a review won't be printed so I just tend to review on Goodreads um, I also will do lists on uh, for fiction I'll do lists on JF Penn and I have a whole page of books that I love um, which are in the thriller supernatural dark fantasy kind of genre uh, and also I have a list of books on the creative pen for writers and authors and also I have a book recommendation every month in both of my newsletters so I have a fiction recommendation and a non-fiction recommendation every month I also share a lot on social media about what I'm reading and um, put stuff on Facebook for example I buy lots of books for other people that's pretty much my default birthday <laughs> option Christmas option and you know I I love spreading the joy of reading um, reading is pretty much uh, you know my life <laughs> reading and books and writing oh it, happy life it's a happy life I should uh, I should mention audiobooks um, I I'm not a huge audiobook listener um, but I do have a few audiobooks for non-fiction that I basically listen to again and again um, which are Jack Canfield the success principles and turning pro by Stephen Pressfield uh, both of which are the only two books I own in print ebook and audio audiobook <laughs> formats 
<laughs> so uh, because they're self-helpy type things so, and I'm a bit of a self-help junkie so that pretty much is how I read how I find books uh, what annoys me as a reader um, how I review books and I'm super interested in your reading habits um, because you know we're all book junkies reading junkies uh, so how do you read how do you find books do you review books what annoys you as a reader please leave a comment below uh, in the comments I'm really interested to to hear so thanks so much i'm joanna penn from thecreativepen.com